Omar, Tom, Yo. welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. My friends, your friends. I know, it's about time I got on your show. I uh, know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy because uh, you, you were the original inaugural host for My Friends, Your Friends. You had two wisdom teeth removed yeah. and weren't able to make it. And then there was... I was in a lot of pain and my face was twice the size. Well, the thing is, we wanted people to come down who were talkers and connectors and you would not be able to talk and connect. So I think we're going to need to re-up and bring you back <laughs> on one of the other ones. But I right. feel like... You know who I want to invite on the next one? Once I pull off a venue, I think Reem would be dope. Oh yeah, Reem should have been there. Yeah, I told her to go represent, but she had she was caught up with she's working on some confidential projects. So like real life kicked in. Yeah, pretty and, much. And so I think eventually I'd like to have well not eventually if it was the first four or the first five I'd like a Dukan personality every single one just because I think yeah. that what you guys are doing is super dope. So it'd be a good place to start. Why don't you tell? Because uh, a lot of my audience is still, of course, in the U- UK and US. Cool. Let folks know what Dukan podcast is. Right, Dukan so, show, sorry. Well, you kind of took away the surprise element. Yeah. It's a, it is a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it started off as a podcast. So Dukan literally means shop. Yeah. So be it a barber shop, be it a grocery store, be it a liquor store, be it a corner store, whatever it is, it's, it literally means shop. Mm. And the beauty of shops is there have always been a main element in community building. So you're either hanging out at a barber shop or you're hanging out on the stoop outside us outside yeah. the grocery store. Yeah. Um and you, you start building communities, you meet cool people, you have great conversations. And it kinda for the younger people it's uh it's where you meet your first group of friends a lot of the times and you start to, you know, build something together. And for us that's kinda where it kicked off and there was um a certain um emotion attached to the cons around the world and that's what we decided to do we kick-started off we kick-started the idea as that um i started a little over a year ago with uh faras ibrahim who's our sound engineer and uh, dj on the show and irshad aka jib these guys back in the day were known as diligent thoughts so they were one of dubai's most prolific rap duo everybody knows and anybody who was in Dubai in back in 05 and 06 knows of Diligent Thought. It's funny because I only know him as Irshad through you yes. because he's your friend. And I only know him as a host of a podcast. Yeah. Then a couple of weeks ago, he put out on an app a freestyle. With Brap TV. Brap TV. Yeah. And I saw that and I was like, he's a rapper. Yeah. Like he can actually <laughs> rhyme. And he's pretty good too. He's, he's more than pretty yeah. good. I always make fun of him because he's Sri Lankan, right? So when you yeah. hang out with Irshad and you're having conversations, he, you can tell he's, he's South Asian. Yeah. Right? Like he could be Sri Lankan or Indian. Yeah. But then as soon as he, you put a beat on and he starts rapping, you cannot tell. He sounds like he's straight out of Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah, he yeah. just morphs into this persona that he owns up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he represents he represents himself. He represents Dubai. He represents Sri Lanka. And he presents the culture very well. And yeah. like there's a certain beauty to it. And it's funny, like, I met... Um, actually, I've known them for a long time, but I didn't see them for years. And then I came back to Dubai sometime in 2015, and I bumped into them right after their show. They were performing for the opening, um, the opening night for Soul DXB, the night right before. And um, so we're talking 2015, 2015 November, yeah. And I saw them there, and I was like, "Hey, long time, Dara." We hung out, and actually, I bumped on, uh, I bumped into Faraz by the bar, and we're catching up, and load that. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually had a very short rap career at some point, and for us was like the guy that kind of got me into it, and we used okay. to work on it together. And you know, I haven't seen these guys in years. I catch him right after the, after the show by the bar. We're catching up, and you know, coming from San Francisco, there's something about that city that just gives you all these kind of ideas you want to do in life, you know. And I was really excited, I was like, yo, I want to start a podcast. And little did I know, for us and Jib Urshad, we're talking about starting a podcast but they didn't want, didn't know what they wanted to do they had no idea like all right let's do it together and the very next day we're in for us as home studio chopping it up figuring out what we wanted to do and that's kind of what where the con came to life from one year later you're the number one podcast in dubai and you were hosting yeah your podcast inside soul dxb so you kind of went back into the womb and did and it from this there year, it's just been that the same way i met reem at dubai links last year that's right? right. I heard the show when you yeah. met her. Yeah, I briefly. And I remember you saying it was a her. moment because, yeah. yeah, because when I met Reem at Lynx, uh, what it was actually, I was. So I give some a, background on Reem because okay. she's not a podcaster ahead no, of joining the con. Okay, yeah. So I think the background on Reem is going to come with the background in this story. So when I was at Dubai Lynx last year, I came as part of representing Leo Burnett, and I was part of the training for the Leo Burnett uh, Student Academy. So, you know, I was giving a talk, and after that, I'm just hanging out at Dubai Links, and I thought, why not take advantage and create content for the con? Drove home, got my microphones, came back, and I was walking around just interviewing people at Links. 
when I came to interview Reem, she was by far the friendliest one. Like, she was just really excited about it. I was like, oh my god, yeah, let's do it. And we're talking. After the interview, we kind of actually hung out and chit-chatted for a while. And from there on, we became instant friends. Reem is half Iraqi, half Filipino, grew up in Canada, is actually a lawyer by education and experience. And she decided to throw all that out to start a video production company called Collective BKP. And that's where and that's how I met her at Lynx and we got the interview. And they ended up kind of taking us on board and giving us studio space. And, you know, that's where we did your interview, right? Yeah, we came yeah. down to the BKP studios. So that's where we were kicking it. Um, we, did, we, we were doing it there. And then for the longest time, and this was something that was part of the initiation process of the Dukan show, we wanted to have a female voice. For me, I wanted a third culture kid of a female voice, and that third culture kid, I wanted her to be half Emirati, half something else. Because something about Emirati women that speaks empowerment, that speaks a lot of strength, they have... You said she's half em Iraqi, though. So she's half Iraqi. So that's the thing. I never thought of having Reem on board. She was just a good friend of the show. Okay. And we ended up, was it episode 17 or 18? We had Reem on the show the same way we had you on the show as a guest. I remember, yeah, yeah. But I never thought of having Reem as a co-host, right? And then... Because I just I was stuck in my ways of I wanted this Emirati girl and I knew she existed somewhere and I wanted this half, half, uh, half cast third culture kid type of yeah, Emirati yeah, yeah. girl. Um, maybe I just and I just left it for the universe and instead the universe gave me Reem mm. and I'm grateful for that because Reem just it was right around the time of my surgery so I was just skyping in on everything yeah so I wasn't active i wasn't out yeah my next my next okay, we'll Dukan to that. is gonna be a, is gonna be one with you in the actual room oh i'd love to yeah um so then when i got so then reem was like okay you know if you guys would are le looking for a girl i'd like to get on the show yeah and i ran the idea by jibin for us and they lost their minds they're like yeah yes let's get reem on the show yeah. and i was like you know what and i was at, th at that time i was still reserved i'm like i'm not sure but i was like you know what maybe this is what's supposed to happen let's do it i got reem on the show and it's probably the best decision we've ever made because Reem came on board. She didn't just bring a female voice to the show, but by far the most articulate, empowered, and brave woman I know out there who's sure. just a hardcore grinder. Like, she works hard, and she's very determined to kind of change the game. And the only and then I spoke to her, I'm like, why did you want to get on the con? Why did you want to be part of it? Yeah. And she's like, I saw something in it, and there's a story I want to be able to tell with you. Right, right. And I thought that was the best way to put it. And she's ever since she's been part of the game. So what a lot of people don't know about you, and it kind of touches back on our history, is that we first met when I came on the radio, yeah. on Radio 1, to do a guest yeah. set with Danny Neville. And uh, you have a radio background. I was way you're, back. Yeah, way back. Radio background. Oh. You're, now, you're now probably at the very beginning of a fashion journey. Yeah. Um, what is it about the two guys and a girl combination of on broadcast because you look at uh, the breakfast club they have angela Yee. yeah you look at ebro in the morning they have laura styles yeah and now dukan yeah, has reem, reem. Yeah. why from a content production point of view what does gender balance mean Ooh, what does it bring it brings a lot of things um first and foremost is a female opinion and an empowered female opinion, especially in the times that we live in today, um, it makes a very big difference because to Kancho, we like we joke about it, but we never fact check things, right? Because it's it's just good conversation. So a lot of the times, it's your opinion and your belief about things. And there's a literally that is fifty percent of the population's voice is not there, right? Right. And that needed to be represented. So straight away, having a girl makes things holistic because exactly. you're right. Uh, the most you can represent is 50% of the world if you've only got dudes. And that's the same with, I work on a gender balance board mm. with one of my clients. Yeah. Loads of women. Same amount of women, if not maybe just one more than men, pre performs incredibly. Of course. Dude, they're game changers. And the thing is, um, because of the histories that you would have as what women went through, or for even on, on a flip side of the conversation of what women of different race or women of different certain nationalities went through the conversations that are happening today have empowered them more than anybody else yeah and they're fighting for it and they're aggressively fighting day in day out and 
if I'm if through the con I was trying to create a holistic experience and build a community around it where people can feel the love and people can feel they're always welcome and you could just come in and sit with us, mm. right? That would have been incredibly unfair if we never had a girl on the show. Right, right, right. right and right. That why, that's why Reem was, was the ideal voice because Reem speaks a lot of love into the world and that was something I had to learn. I'm notoriously known to be a bit too blunt and I could be very, a bit too in people's face and I could be a little bit aggressive sometimes and... It, the, 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 the dark side of that is the fact that sometimes I can forget to empathize with other people. And then Reem comes and she's like, it's not about empathy, it's just about speaking love. So even when you're trying to tell somebody, you're trying to help somebody, you're trying to critique or you're trying to do anything, it, it is about speaking a little bit of love. Um, it is about helping other people. And she didn't just bring that to the show, but she brought that into our lives as well. So for me, it changed how I talk to people. It changed how um, I address certain situations. When... We were at, um, when we were at Lynx, um, it was amazing to see how people recognized who we are. We went from nobody knows who the Khan is to taking over two stages. The main stage where Reem was part of a, an influencer panel and I was hosting the regional stage. And then... This is as Khan. This is as Khan. Wow. And for those who don't know Lynx Festival, Lynx Festival Lynx. is the marketing, advertising, creative festival exactly. of... Really, it's the a region convention, creative festival. Yeah. It's an award slash. It's like the Oscars of advertising. It's the full package, and we were there and we represented as as the con. And one of the things that Reem was asked was that you know she was part of this panel of our influencers losing influence basically, and she said she's like we never look at it as we never look at ourselves as influencers nor do we care for that title because whether we have ten followers whether we have ten thousand we're gonna keep doing what we're doing we're gonna keep putting our message out of, of love and we're going to keep putting our message of community out there because it's always been about building a community of good people around us. So your name is, the name of the show is Dukan and obviously I, in the 80s my dad had a shop. Mm -hmm. I could look outside my shop any night after school yeah. and see a bunch of kids, pre-mobile phones, drinking soda pop, eating candy, etc, etc. Yes. <laughs> so in a way, Dukan... The, the Dukan, the front of the shop, is a platform for, oh, this guy's good on a BMX, or this guy's good on a skateboard, or this guy's good at memorizing lyrics from songs, or this guy's got this playing card, this wrestling That's playing exactly card. It. Where's Dukan going as a platform? So as a platform, as I said earlier when we started, I was like, we started off as a podcast, and now we're expanding out of that world. We're launching our YouTube channels, and we have a couple of concepts for YouTube. Um, we're in the works now of a new podcast series as well. Um, Original by the same producers or another team that's syndicated under the no, Dukan no. So, umbrella? Same producers, new voices, new team on the show. Right, right, right. Uh, it's a whole new show, but we're, taking, we're doing the back end work. Right. So you're, you're going to start to see that very soon. Um, we're going to start to see YouTube very soon. And we're coming in as... Um, and we're looking to actually get involved with academia. So we're trying to help with... Um, getting into the conversations with universities and schools and getting involved in that. So our main focus was to be, as I said, communal. So talk to startups, talk to people, go out there, help with whatever way we could. We could uh, if Reams Video Production Company can come and do programs or classes and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talk about podcasting, I come in and talk but about branding. Um, so we're getting involved in the different communities that we're interested in and are part of our lives individually and as a collective. But this new child of Dukan, this, you know, this, this yeah. spin out, what, do you know what, can you reveal what vertical it's going to be focusing on? Because you mentioned startups. Is yeah. it going to be like Dukan but for tech? That is one we're working on. Yeah. But that's, the, that's our phase three. Okay. The current one that's kicking off is actually focusing on Arabic content. Okay. And that's something Which, we from Leo Burnett days, when we used to hang out there, we know that that is a huge it market is. opportunity. Is, yeah. the, is the either original Arabic content, which is a great to have, yeah. but even repurposed Arabic content, the Arabic exactly. version of... That's in fact, thing. to be honest, I'm getting it now. The okay. Arabic version of... Du if Dukan did so well in the Middle East, and it's in English, How that then the good. Arabic version would be lit. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Right. So it's an evolution. Yeah. In a way, it has the potential to actually overtake the original. And you want to know what's funny? That came from a tr the a lot of the inspirations came from a troll we had. We had okay. someone that trolled us online, and this is the thing: it's all about how you talk to trolls. Sometimes they could be your best asset and ambassadors. Yeah, yeah. So we had a troll who was like, "How dare you call this Dukan when Dukan's an Arabic word and you guys don't even speak Arabic on the show?" Right. We're like, first off, 
we're all mostly I'm I'm Sudanese. For us, Sudanese, there's Jib and Rima's part Iraqi. Mm. So we started off as we were Arabs. Yeah. But then to make things even more interesting, like we live in the UAE, a lot of our friends are non-Arabs, and for we're trying to be, um, we're we're trying to be caring and giving attention to our non-Arab friends, so they can enjoy the conversations with us. So it's idea the platform is supposed to be for everybody, right? So, and then he goes back and was like, it's not fair that you're calling it Tukan. You should have something Arabic. We're like, you know what? We're working on it. We're gonna do something about that. Right, mm. and we said that to him, and this guy gets excited. He's like, you know what? This is why I like you guys. Thank you for not ignoring me. This is what it's all about. That and he became an advocate. And on the don't tell him that Dukan is also used by Indians as well. <laughs> <laughs> You've got quite far with him, right? <laughs> don't break yeah, his spirit but, now. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that, that's the beauty of it. Like, it's just the idea was never to isolate anybody. Which is why our tagline is always "Welcome to your tribe." Yeah, yeah. Not "Welcome to our tribe." Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. It's always about if you have anything you want to say or you feel left out or you don't fit in anywhere you fit in with us because yeah. it started by third culture kids yeah, yeah, yeah so it's always inclusive it's like i think we had this one girl who commented she's like yeah down with exclusivity you know welcome to your tribe and yeah she got excited about it too and that was kind of the idea you know just to bring everybody in together um and what advice would you give for somebody now i mean it's it's weird to us because we're boys but like to a lot of people people will be looking at ot like I want to. I want to be like that. I want a piece of that. I want to take a little bit of what he does and make it my own. What advice would you give to a to like a a young person right now who's thinking, man, I'd like to, I'd like Do to it. produce my own content. Do it. Do it. Here's what's gonna happen. Um, I always say, go ahead. Do it. Make it happen. Um, and experiment. Luckily, you don't have to be perfect from the start. If you listen to our first episode and you listen to where we are now, sonically, we've come a long way. The formula is still the same, but the quality has improved episode, every, every episode after episode, every mm. time. Mm. Episode one was horrible. Now when I meet people and I tell them what I do and, you know, this is the con show, I'm like, yeah, listen to the new ones. Don't listen, <laughs> Don't yeah, listen yeah. to episode one. It's horrible. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. the thing is that episode one is great. You know, it's not bad, but because we've come a long way, the way I look at it now and I look back, it's like, it wasn't that good because it's DIY and you learn as you go. Yeah. The worst thing is you want to start perfect. Mm. That was never going to happen. You're not going to start perfect. No matter how tech savvy you are, you have the best equipment, the best cameras, the best microphones out there. Great. But if you do not have good content, you do not have taste, it doesn't matter what equipment you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started off with a Zoom mic and two little microphones. And for us, it's bedroom, which was a makeshift studio in its place. Yeah. And now we've got great studios that we record at. we got better equipment and we're you know we've grown with the show yeah but if you don't start you'll never grow like, so just, just start start do it take and find surround yourself with friends who tell you what you're doing wrong right it's um the one thing i always didn't like is when people tell me yo i love your show it's amazing i i love it thank you very much but at the beginning stages I'm like i wanted people to tell me what's wrong with it so mm. i always ask what do you, what don't you like about the show because if someone loves your first version of stuff and you already know it's not your best yeah it's not taking you closer to it's your not. best so that's what i, I always ask people when t- someone tells me they like it first thing is like oh, what don't what didn't you like about the yeah, show? yeah you know um at the beginning people didn't like that we had we started getting guests on the show and they're like we don't even know who you are yet so there was no character development so okay. that we focused on that. Right? Okay. So it's okay. always been about what don't you like? Some people didn't like that we had music at the end. They're like, why is your music at the end not in the middle of the show? I'm like, but we're not a radio show. We're not a music show. Yeah. The music is yeah. there to just help you relax after and help you digest this heavy conversation that could have happened. Right, right. right? I never I never I've enjoyed the music, yeah. but I didn't realize what the subplot what like what the what the subconscious reason was why yeah. you're doing it. it. Makes sense. So and it's funny, libido. Uh, I think we're like four or five episodes in at the time. I met, I bumped into Libido and he's like, hey man, congratulations, love the show. And he said something interesting that I never thought of. For, to me, it was just, we had the music at the end to help people digest and kind of, you know, ease those things out. Mm-hmm. And he comes and tells me, he's like, you know, when you have the cool kind of conversations and going into depth of conversations the way you do on the con, the beauty is like that lights up a certain part of the brain and then the music lights up another part of the brain. So it helps balance things out. It's literally and, a digestive. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I never thought of it that way, but that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what it's been doing. So we stuck to that formula. You know, because Indians, at the end of our meal, we have what's called suadara, like yeah. the little uh, seeds and stuff like that. We eat it. And it's a digestive. So they're all that crazy curry and bread and all that rice and other <laughs> stuff we've eaten. <laughs> it it helps with that. So that's what that, that's what that music is at the end. Yeah. So that's why you get music at the end. So and dope. That's why for us, 
the music is created after the episode. So for right. us, has to hear the conversation, and according to the conversation, he creates a music mix. I did the same with my mix, yeah. and I didn't realize why I was doing it, but I listened to the podcast, and then I recorded yeah. the mix. Because you're right, they yeah. do, they do lead synergy. into each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, need that, you need that synergy in it, and it, it became part of the um, sound signature of the show. Dope. What, what, what would you, where can, um, I mean, this conversation is going to happen a lot more. I'm in Dubai now. Finally. But, um, and it'll happen on my channels, it'll happen on your channels, For it'll sure. happen hopefully on others' channels as well. But the, wh- where can folks find you online? Okay, so online you can find me personally. It is at OT Official. Yeah. Um, and it's the same across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Yeah. You name it. Um, you can find the show at The Can Show, which is D-U-K-K-A-N Show. Yeah. Um, that's across Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and the website is www.thecanshow.com. All right, dope. Well, listen, for these videos, we're keeping them kind of short. I feel like we could do two hours because our lunches last could, two hours. Yeah, so we could, we could you know, no, we, we could keep, keep going. going. But let's uh, let, let's draw a line. It. Thank you for supporting the first My Friends, Your Friends. It's unfortunate yeah. you couldn't make it, but I'll be there there's the a, next one, you'll be there for the next one. And, I, and I'd love to see Ducano people from that DNA always there because I really feel, and I've said it before, but I try to take public opportunities to say, I really feel like you guys are the, the future of Dubai because it's so needed. Yeah. That voice, and I and I don't think you can underestimate that if you're in London or Atlanta or Bangkok, listening yeah. to it, how if that's your first ever impression of Dubai, how how good that is for the city. Uh, you, the, I mean, I know we're ending this, but I feel like I just feel like pointing this out. I never thought of that. I never thought of it in that way. Yeah. Um, I just thought I was just doing cool content and it's some space for me to vent sometimes after a tough week. Yeah. I never thought of that until I actually got a long letter from, what was it, from Arizona. This, this Mexican guy in Arizona sends me a thank you letter. Uh, and talking about how much he loves the show and how much it gave him a new perspective on Islam and on the Middle East and on the people who live in the Middle East and what life in the Middle East looks like and the fact that because he's Mexican, living in Arizona and how he never felt Mexican enough for the Mexicans and he's never American for America and he gets and definitely get in Arizona, culture, yeah. yeah, kid life. So he was just talking about that and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I've never thought of it that way that, that actually somebody in Arizona listens to the show and related to it so much mm. and he felt like he has this distant group of friends yeah, yeah, yeah and that was I think that was one of the highlights of this journey and that empowered me I mean it didn't matter if you tell me today you don't have numbers you only have 10 listeners I'm like great but you know what he's one of them yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah so I'm just gonna keep putting out that content yeah if, 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 if his personality maps to the other ones then you know you're doing great work yeah I love it, man. We'll speak again soon. Definitely. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.